Um, I would like to uh, continue with uh, something on uh, the why of theory of change. Uh, and uh, you see there's a very nice image there. It's a theory of change. There's a lot of color to it, I would say. But maybe we go back to planning and planning how it was perceived in the, in the future. Um, I think this little image shows a lot about how planning was perceived in the past. Uh, you may have uh, tried this earlier, but if you take one little ball out of this and you uh, let it go, then it will click against the, old, the, the balls and it will very automatically it will start moving and clicking. Uh, it is really easy to foresee what will be the change as a consequence of your actions. And uh, that is often how planning was perceived before. You do things and the, the things that you do will produce change. Now, uh, this has been subject to a lot of uh, criticism and a lot of uh, reflection because, hey, uh, is it so obvious that uh, a change will happen if we do things? Uh, well, uh, maybe it is a medical uh, uh, and, uh, and maybe we have to give it a little bit more thought uh, about how change is actually taking place. And especially when we talk about uh, complexity, um, uh, we would like to know a little bit more, try to understand a little bit more about uh, why, uh, why the things uh, uh, occur the way they occur. So theory of change really tries to fill in this gap, this medical gap, uh, trying to map change processes in complex social fields in the in the way in the areas in which we you may we be work. familiar with logical framework analysis or uh, logical frameworks without the analysis part or results frameworks uh, a few things of criticism in relation to this because this gave the way to thinking about other types of planning tools that would be available for projects and programs usually the idea was that logical frameworks are reductionist the change process is bigger than than what you capture in a logical framework. So you reduce reality, you try to make it more simplistic uh, in order to be able to think about, well, can we control the change processes that we would like to bring about? Linear thinking, uh, if A happens, B will happen, but uh, it, may, it may be that other changes will also come as a result of the change thinking. So it is too linear. And of course, in logical frameworks, we have a focus on quantitative change meaning things that we can measure change that we can measure and often uh, at the level of, of outputs and as a consequence of uh, the the simplistic and the linear thinking and the tools that go with that uh, there was a focus on on maybe more on accountability than on learning and um, and we think that uh, learning is key to becoming effective because you would like to know why things don't work and what can we do in order to make it work? Uh, so especially in complex environments. So in complex environments, we say you have to learn in order to be able to do things differently, do better things, uh, etc., in order to make a change. Yeah. So as an answer to that, uh, the planning of projects has uh, changed. Now the idea is that we embrace complexity. Uh, we take reality as it is and try to understand it to the best of our possible possibilities. Uh, but embracing complexity is a key thing there. You see that political economy analysis is something that has come up over the last couple of years with a focus on incentives, with a focus on interests about how decisions are being affected by people with power. And uh, so political economy analysis is something that has come up. And uh, we have seen that there's been a rise in the field of the use of uh, theory of change. And I put in between brackets thinking, uh, because it may also be that it's not the theory of change as a process per se, that is uh, always um, gaining more importance, but also the thinking, uh, thinking that the change process is actually uh, how we think it may take place. It's our theory. And so let us keep that in mind and so that we are thinking of change processes as a theory. And there's a lot of focus nowadays on learning and adapting, on uh, trying to find out what works, what doesn't work, learn and adapt. And that has then led to the, for, to the development of a relatively new concept, which is called adaptive management. 
and adaptive management, of course, in order to make a change in complex environments. Um, and you may uh, think of theory of change as a product, as something that you can see, something that can be shared. Uh, it's a vision with pathways of change, assumptions, but also a strategy. Now, what you see on this particular slide to the right is an actual theory of change of the Erasmus Plus uh, program. Uh, and this is, these are their pathways towards a vision that I'll be sharing with you in a, in a moment. And they have their strategies uh, in order to make sure that they will together uh, work towards the vision that they have uh, this, uh, developed for themselves. At the same time, it is also a process. Uh, it's a process in which stakeholders together develop the, the theory of change together, but also learn and adapt together. It means that a product is not something final. It's not something that you prepare and then implement and then forget about what your theory of change was. Now, implementation is about testing your theory and adapting the theory when you see it does not work. So uh, ODI says here, uh, a theory of change is about radical learning, meaning learning should be at the heart of your organization of who you are as a development uh, practitioner. So in short, implementation is testing of theory. Hey, uh, that is a very key uh, important thing, especially if you talk about complexity. Uh, um, we don't know whether what we want to, to do will work in practice. We test, we adjust our theory. Okay, um, a visioning change. Now, okay, um, a vision, um, uh, it may be very simple like this, an economically healthy, sustainable and inclusive society. Well, to me, this vision, uh, uh, the way it is presented, does not describe a really appealing vision. Still, this is a 28 billion program. And so for sure, there must be a lot of vision behind this in order to have such a big program. This is about Europe. This is about people from different countries uniting together and building a, a, a continent together. So, um, hey, um, I, I think Erasmus Plus uh, could do a better job in communicating their vision. Sorry if there's any people from the Erasmus Plus program here, but I think uh, this is something uh, that uh, would be a kind of feedback for me uh, to them. Uh, but it starts with the vision and uh, the process, and it's all about stakeholders. And it's about stakeholders and the change that they would uh, need to be, make a reality in order to uh, work towards the vision. And many of you already said, hey, uh, it is not so easy for stakeholders to change, to change their behavior. What makes us think that they will change their behavior? And that is a key question. And I would like to focus a little bit with you on that in uh, following slides. In the process itself, you go towards backward mapping, uh, brainstorming, but it's always about outcomes, meaning you will have who is changing and what is changing. It is about behavioral change. What you would like to have at a certain, certain moment is pathways of change, which is uh, something that you will see in this image, but you also see the question marks here. And the question marks is uh, about why do we think that one change may lead or contribute to the next change. Uh, 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 what are our reasons to think that that will change process will become a reality? So in that sense, the assumptions become the fundament of your theory. We think that A will lead to B because of this. Yeah, and of course, substantiation is part of it. Substantiation is about collecting information to tell us something about whether or not this assumption actually will be true or may be true. And so getting information is key when it comes to uh, identifying uh, assumptions. OK, let us have a closer look at, uh, at a, a case. Uh, will A lead to B, uh, our underlying assumptions? And I have an example here uh, with you that say, hey, citizens, if citizens get information about healthy food, maybe through websites, social content and advertisements, then they will change their food consumption. They will consume more healthy food. Okay, hmm, okay. Uh, yes, it sounds very obvious. It sounds very logical. But if we zoom in a little bit on why we think this may take place, we will come to all kinds of assumptions underlying this change process. 
and I have listed the number of you of these assumptions for you to derive. Possible assumptions. Hey, is the information accessible? Hey, will they understand the information? Hey, is the information new? Hey, do people actually care about their health? Hey, do they have the willpower to take action? Hey, is actually healthy food available? Hey, do people have sufficient money to buy this food? Hey, and what about the social environment in which people are going to change their uh, food consumption? So you see that uh, something that sounds obvious in the beginning uh, may be a little bit more complex if you zoom in on your underlying assumptions. Now, all these assumptions that are there are uh, elements that you can test, that you can get information about. You can go and check if people actually care about their health or if they have the willpower to take action. You can do surveys, you can get all kinds of information by going and talking to the people who, uh, who are uh, actually uh, the target group of this particular process. So uh, assumptions is not such uh, an easy thing. I think this is at the heart of uh, theory of change. Uh, uh, and uh, okay, and uh, and then uh, on this uh, short overview, uh, because if you have this these assumptions, then you can also say, well, what are the strategies? And you have your theory of change complete. Okay? Uh, but have a, have a look at at the theory of change uh, as a kind of uh, a product and the kind of uh, uh, element here that you say, well, what are the key messages that you would like to have? So for me. Uh, and for us at MDF, I think a vision should be inspiring and inclusive, meaning uh, we are talking about the social domain in which change we would like in, in which change uh, would like to uh, we would like to take uh, see place. Assumptions are often about stakeholder behavior. They're the fundament of the theory. So keep keep a close eye on these assumptions. And also, if you think about your assumptions, um, and there are things that you don't really know or you really uh, would like to learn about, make sure that you translate these uh, uh, learning uh, areas in actionable learning agendas. I put indicators between brackets because indicators uh, are very much about quantitative aspects of change. Learning agendas are much more uh, helpful in getting information in a qualitative manner that will help you learn and then adjust afterwards. So, and if you have that, then I think you will also have a theory of change as a basis for adaptive management. And then the last uh, core message on this slide is theory of change as basis for partnerships. Hey, um, if you map change processes, it becomes quickly relatively complex because, hey, we are embracing complexity. That means that there will be a number of pathways that you say, hey, this is a pathway on which we will be working. But if we want to really work towards our joint vision or our vision, then we may have to make partnerships with other actors who are also working in the same field. So the theory of change then becomes a basis for partnerships. OK, um, I would like to go a little bit ahead and uh, this poll I'm going to uh, skip. Um, I would like to think a little bit with you, uh, with you on, um, on this idea of stakeholder behavior. Um, um, we have realized at MBF that stakeholder behavior is sometimes very, very difficult to predict, uh, some, something very difficult also to achieve. So we say that we really need to make a bigger effort to understand uh, about these stakeholders and uh, what may move them towards the behavior we would like to see for these uh, stakeholders. So. Uh, that's what we call uh, target behavior. Yeah, so we use the COM-B model you, that you can see here in the, in the screen. Um, and it has a number of elements. It's about capability. So can they actually change? Can this behavior be accomplished in principle? A question that you have already answered. And many of you said, well, most stakeholders may not be really capable of changing. OK, so what does that mean for us as a project or a program? And the opportunity, is there sufficient opportunity for behavior? I would like to change that also to, can stakeholders actually uh, change their behavior within a stakeholder environment? Meaning, all the stakeholders that are out there, uh, they will have relations with the stakeholders of your project. Yeah, And uh, how do they relate to each other? What is the playing field in which these stakeholders cooperate and work together? 
And then, of course, the last question, motivation, or do they want to? What is in it for the stakeholders? So we use this uh, tool a lot in order to identify our own assumptions in relation to stakeholder behavior. We take it a little bit uh, further. We don't just think uh, about uh, inventorizing possible assumptions, but we try to analyze the stakeholders and then uh, think what the assumptions are. I, we think that makes your theory of change much more in line with uh, the complexity of uh, change processes. Okay, so a uh, question. So what do we observe in practice? Because if this is about uh, theory of change and about uh, about uh, already some core messages that we see, uh, we see this in a few words. Uh, so um, um, there's two sentences here. Um, many of the theories of change that we see do not embrace complexity. Uh, we see theories of change that are again relatively uh, linear, relatively simplistic. Um, um, it, it, if we implement those theories of change, we do not do justice to complexity. Uh, and we think more could be done in order to have a theory of change of quality that really uh, is based on a better understanding of complex reality. So that is our, uh, our key thing here. And that leads to wishful thinking. Um, uh, still, uh, if we do this, then that will happen. In other words, this uh, medical gap that I was talking about earlier uh, will not be addressed. It is still a medical gap. If we do this, we assume, we hope, we think that change will take place in line with our thinking. And then we are surprised that, hey, things don't change. Why would that be? Yeah, maybe a little bit too late. Maybe it is good to uh, do a better job right, uh, right from the start and, uh, and make a better theory of change. And um, some core messages in that, uh, in that relation. Yeah, so uh, how to make a better theory of change? That is the key question for us here. So focusing on the, on the process um, of developing a theory of change, involve people who know. Uh, it sounds easy, but it is actually quite complex. And involving people who know, who know best. These are people often who are facing, who are in the middle of this complexity. People you would like to work with, people in the communities, people in schools, people in universities. Uh, people in organizations that face consequences of political uncertainty. So involve these people and try to map the change processes that uh, you think uh, will become the pathways of your theory of change. Yeah, um, and I go to the one uh, towards the bottom that also focuses on being inclusive. Make sure that the people who really need a voice around the development of projects and programs that their voices are heard. So be inclusive and make sure that you use a gender lens because it is too easy to make a theory of change that is gender blind and that will cause more problems in the field of gender than, uh, than that it helps resolve yeah, or helps change the status quo. So I think that is a, a key important part there. Um, it, uh, the other one is collect data and information on assumptions. I explained a little bit about the assumptions part um, um, we don't really see that there's a real effort to get a lot of information on assumptions. Make sure that you understand and, and try to find out also from the field uh, what the situation is like. Get data, get the information. Take time to reflect. And so if you don't know, go and collect the information. And we know, of course, many organizations have difficulties and they need to submit a proposal. But uh, you better have uh, sufficient time to do a, a good reflection and prepare a good proposal, a good theory of change, then later on have something that is relatively, uh, uh, again, uh, wishful thinking. Uh, advanced stakeholder analysis. Um, I presented the COMBI model, but I think it is good to zoom in on power and on interest to find out what are the reasons behind power, the basis for power but also to think about interests as a little bit wider than the interests that people uh, may be, uh, uh, or the, the interest that may be affected uh, by participating or being beneficiaries of a project. They have other interests as well. Yeah? So think about that uh, uh, and do an advanced stakeholder uh, analysis. 
And if you talk about process, um, um, uh, don't make a theory of change behind your desk. Uh, uh, make sure that you do workshops and that you get professional facilitation to help you bring all this knowledge together and have good reflections on the, the change processes. Build your theory on basis of information and knowledge of people. Okay. And then about the product itself, um, hey, um, um, so if you go through the process, then uh, then what can you do in order to improve uh, the product? Um, I would say visualization is key, meaning uh, a, a good theory of change uh, will uh, will present to yourself and to to yourself, I would say, the complexity of the change processes. But towards the outside world, uh, it would present your understanding of this complexity in a in a proper way. So make sure that you have uh, a, a good visualization. Yeah, and then there may be internal and external versions. I showed you briefly this uh, 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 pathways of um, uh, the uh, Erasmus Plus program. They have two versions: one for their internal purposes, which uh, show complexity. Uh, uh, and uh, which will allow them to test the change relations in time. Uh, so, hey, that's a very interesting one for themselves. But they have another one that they share towards the outside world, which is more focused on gaining support for their change processes and uh, that they would like to bring about. And um, a little bit simplified uh, version, I would say. Again, be afraid, don't make it too simple. But uh, I think it is good to have these uh, one for communication purposes and one for your own internal learning and reflection purposes. Um, in terms of the product itself, uh, uh, strategies. Um, uh, RF stands for results framework. You can have a theory of change first and then build your results framework. Don't do away with your uh, theory of change. Don't throw it overboard. Keep it there. So that means that your results framework is then based also on a, on a sound theory uh, of, uh, of change. Then it says TOA, theory of action. Uh, so this is more about your theory on what it is that you're going to do and the, the change that you would like to bring about. Uh, it's a little bit more modest than the theory of change. It's much more uh, uh, activity focused, I would say, and the direct results of your actions. Both things are, are, are possible and there's no standard format for what would be a theory of change uh, strategy and how to formulate it. So the product is really up to you to think what is what is useful for you. Um, highlight the question marks. Um, um, I think highlighting the question marks in your product helps people understand that, that it's a theory. Uh, and I already indicated earlier, uh, learning agendas is a good tool or a good method in order to highlight the question marks. We would like to know about these question marks during implementation. And if we have an answer, then we will link it to our uh, adaptive management. And make sure that when you have your theory of change, it's, it sounds so uh, obvious, but sometimes people uh, uh, think about theory of change pathways or theory of change as, as products that need to be produced. But make sure that you keep on focused on uh, the behavioral change of outcomes. So, uh, a behavior, sorry, behavioral change of stakeholders. So make sure that uh, the theory of change remains outcomes fo outcome focused. So, who and what changes and make sure it is actively formulated. Um, I would like to uh, bring your uh, attention to the following, uh, because hey, we had one hour uh, to discuss the concept of theory of change and complexity and what it is that you can do in order to make it better, uh, to uh, embrace complexity. Um, and uh, first of all, um, I would like to draw your attention that we have a course, uh, and Martin is there, uh, and, He's the one who designed this uh, e-learning platform uh, for becoming more acquainted with uh, the various steps in theory of change development. But it also includes the facilitation part, which is about, hey, how do we do it? How do we bring stakeholders together? Uh, how do we make sure that um, these assumptions are collected positively? Uh, and uh, yeah, and how do we bring how do we bring it all together? So, so we pay a lot of attention to the facilitation part, not just the product in the process, but facilitation of the process in order to uh, uh, have a, uh, a product. Uh, and then we have uh, the results-based management course, which will be in, in October. Uh, so uh, this is in the, an uh, online course, I, I realize. 
Um, hey, um, and uh, you can also join that and in all our results-based management courses, but also in the gender course, we pay attention to theory of change. So you will see that it comes back um, in, uh, in most of our courses.